nice to see all of your phones. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Talks at Google. Today, it is my pleasure to welcome Olivia Munn for X-Men Apocalypse. Thank you very much. Thank you for the pronunciation. I, I tried very hard. We practiced this. She said, uh, it's uh, Talks at Google. And I said, why did you guys name it Talks at Google? I said, we're Britney fans. Uh, <laughs> um, so, huge, huge nerd movie. You are an awesome geek nerd icon. How does it feel to kind of add this to your your wall of badges. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I still feel, um, and I, I felt at the time, I still feel like, I feel like, uh, like a nerd mole. I feel like they've let me in. And I'm like, hey guys, I got some stuff to tell you. <laughs> like I, I get in there and I don't really feel like, like, uh, you know, I think somebody asked me the other day about um, like, oh, like to be part of this community. Like how did that feel? I go, well, actually I think, in my opinion, you know, that the, the nerd community or the, especially the X-Men community, it, it's, it's not, the movies are the biggest platform because that's what Hollywood is, the biggest platform for entertainment, but the community started long before the movies. And, uh, and so to me, it just felt like, a, it felt like I, I was able to get in and, and kind of see what they're doing from the inside. So I kind of don't, I don't, I still feel like the outsider on the inside. What, what was your sort of first introduction to the world of X-Men? Was it the comics? Was it... it was the comic books. Uh, I grew up in Japan and um, one of five kids and we didn't have a lot of money. So we, my mom would let us buy one and we'd all share it. And, uh, but we got into all different kind of comic books and we just kind of read. And, but X-Men was way back then, I think. Did you have a favorite storyline? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think I, it was, um, no, I, I never, no. All of them. <laughs> Do you have a favorite storyline from it? It feels like there's just so many. Like how there's does, so many. It's really a great question, but it's a hard answer. I enjoyed House of M. Oh. Yeah. So you do have an answer. I'm sorry. I do have an answer. <laughs> um, an easier question than I thought. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, you you are joining this one. There's a we're getting introduced to a ton of new characters. What what can you tell us about Psylocke or your interpretation of her? Uh, of Psylocke. Um, well, this is the introduction of of Psylocke. Well, she was introduced once before, um, but that was like a like a little blip of her. Uh, I when I I was excited because I've always loved Psylocke when. I loved what I loved about Psylocke was that she was, and I was reading it that she was a, a villain who didn't have a problem killing. You know, a lot of times people like they have they hesitate when they when when they have to kill. Like if they have, they'll only kill if they have to. But I like that Psylocke. She can create anything with her mind, so she could create a boulder and just kill everybody and be done. But I always thought that she felt that was a little too boring. So she liked to kill up close and personal. And I always liked that. <laughs> like, that's a kind of a cool quality. Like, not only that, she's one of the mutants who not only has kind of metaphysical powers, but she's mm -hmm. physically a badass. Right, yeah, like she's, you know, telekinetic and she's telepathic, but she's also really skilled and she's uh, really powerful. And that's what, when I sat down, so Simon Kimberg, um, he, had, he wanted me to do another role in, um, in Deadpool. Uh, but it just uh, it's not, wasn't a role I connected with. Mm. Like, you know, thank you for the opportunity, but I just, you know, uh, I don't connect with this. And it was a little serendipitous because not that long after, he called me about Psylocke. And uh, when I met with him, I did say, you know, I know that you guys introduced her once before, but, like, you know, Psylocke was the last one added to this whole, to the whole X-Men Apocalypse movie. Uh, they, were, they had the horsemen already with, the, with Apocalypse, and then they felt like they needed a fourth. And then, oh, yeah, and then there's Psylocke, and then they thought of me for it. So when I met with them, I said, you know, he said, it's, we're introducing this character, so there's, you know, it builds up into the movies after, and there's more stuff, but this one, there's not going to be, you know, a ton of stuff. And I said, do you mean dialogue-wise or presence-wise? He said, no, no, she, just dialogue-wise. Like she's, she's a presence, and she's the whole movie. And I said, well, like, I, like, I'm not one of those people. I'm not counting lines, and I don't, it's, dialogue doesn't matter. I go, but if you give her a badass fight scene, then I'm in. And he's like, fine, we, we, we got the fight scene. So like, to me, that was the monologue. So for, to me, it only made sense to do Psylocke if they were going to make her really strong and lethal. And um, they give, you know, all these guys get badass fight scenes. And as the girl, you gotta like, you know, it's always like, really slow and then you're doing something and you gotta come up on him and then you take, you know, I'm like, no, can we just like grapple and fight and and really get into it, and like I want to get knocked around, and I want to knock somebody else around. Like actually, like do a badass fight scene, and and thankfully they 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 were all down for that. So what was the training process like? Um, I started doing uh, I started working with stunts, like learning wire and um, and how to flip and stuff, and then I started working with uh, martial arts 
couple. Um, they have their own gym, and the husband, Ken, he uh, is an expert in all martial arts and, al and also sword. So I started doing sword with him, and then uh, I would do taekwondo. And so I, my training ended up being like six, seven hours a day, pretty much every day for about four, four months, um, leading up into the fight scene. And so by the end, um, I was, you know, I did all of my fight scenes and all of my stunts, and that wasn't planned. But in the end, uh, I was able to just to do it all. Uh, I do have a, a taekwondo background, so uh, it's not like you know I was like able to learn everything. Like so, I, but I had that background already, and then just training again with them, uh, it just. It was just it was just so much fun and because it was everything for me to do. I, if I was going to do Psylocke, I really wanted to do this fight scene, and so to get really strong and powerful and to learn all these things was very important to me. And so then we took that time. And then by the time the fight scene came around, um, I was you know I felt. I mean I still feel like it's a weird. Th do you do martial arts? I do. You do? I, d what, I did. What martial arts? Karate. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you know which which kind? Wadu Ryu. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? The way of peace and harmony. Oh. Really effective in a fight. Don't you say, <laughs> you just like someone comes at you with a knife and you're like, hey. Chill out. Chill. Yeah. Oh. A... Dead. <laughs> um, uh, ta yeah, Taekwondo is, it's like when you, when you do, do people here, anybody do martial arts? Oh, my, my one security guy who's been assigned to me. Thank you. Um, you feel like really, it's a different feeling. You feel capable. Like there's like, um, like a lot of people get like, you know, like they put on muscle and they know how to like look lean or thin or bulked up, but there's a different kind of feeling. It's like athletic strength is what I feel like I have. So I feel like really capable. It's a good, it's a cool feeling. I've, I've heard it described as sort of like a, a confidence, you know, I think it's a little bit of knowing that like, yeah, no, I could maybe do something in a fight. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if, if, yeah. I think not maybe. I like that's it is. It's I'm saying maybe for me. I'm oh sure yeah, you yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'm, right I'm, I'm, I'm saying probably not for your, you know, peaceful fighting thing. I'm saying, I'm, I'm gonna say you have to call me, and I'll, I'll come. We, we should, you should actually. Have you ever done your peaceful fighting technique? It's, it didn't work out very well. So. Well, it's, it's not, it's not the strong. I mean, it's a, it's a very nice choice, not the most protective choice. No, not at all. Uh, but that's okay. Yeah. You seem like a very sweet person. As you mentioned before, you know, dialogue like is a, I would say the whole X-Men universe is kind of, uh, there's no good and evil necessarily. Everyone just mm -hmm. has their own motivations, but Psylocke's maybe more willing to engage in mm -hmm. tactics that fall on evil. But um, how is it interacting with the other kind of new folks coming in as the horsemen and um, the new cast of characters? Yeah, it's, it was really fun uh, with, you know, everyone is a, it's a, you know, we, there were so many people in this movie and we would all shoot different times mm -hmm. but then at night we'd all get together and we'd like basically like shut down a like a restaurant just for us to hang out I mean not we wouldn't go in there and be like shut down because of us but we we just take up so much room that we have to like call ahead to a restaurant and we all hung out so it's a really cool group of people but yeah but I speaking on the um the villain the you know good guys and like no one's really like you know most people want to do good like I think that's the the um do you guys know the backstory of, of Psylocke I mean people. Why don't you tell um, us? Well, well, okay, well, back in third grade, Psylocke was, uh, she, but she came from a good family, and she had a you know, twin brother, and then she, uh, and then when they were killed, you know, she has these amazing powers, and to me, when I was a kid, that's what I loved. She has, like, what I thought were the two most coveted powers, you know, to be telekinetic and telepathic, and so she was like Wolverine, how he was um, used by people for them to, you know, use his powers to to do their bidding. That's what, you know, Psylocke is alone, and she's always different leaders have always, uh, you know, taken her in and um, manipulated her so that you know sh they could use her powers. And I think she's always trying to find her, you know, her, like her, uh, you know, a righteous leader to to follow. And she just happened to get in with the bad guys. So she's just really good. She's really strong. She's really smart. She's very loyal. She's always had the wrong leaders. And so if you know the story of Psylocke, she wasn't. She's not. You know, I'm bad in this movie. You know, but the hope is that in the next one, I mean, I probably will still be bad, but there will be, there's a switch because Psylocke in, in the comic book, she does, you know, become good, but she just needs the right person to, the right leader to guide her, the right group, the right family. And that actually in the comic books happens when, you know, the X-Men world brings her in. Uh, but before that, it's hard. I mean, just in, and that's what I think I always loved about it as a kid was that, you know, I grew up in a military family. We moved around a lot and I'm, you know, half Chinese, half white. 
as are you, and uh, and and being different, you know, you always in moving around a lot, always a new kid, so I'm always a new kid, and I didn't look like everybody else. That's what I identified with the X Men universe. It's they, that it's the the people that don't always fit in with everybody else that were ostracized, and that the people wanted to, you know, the majority of people want to like put down or eradicate. So for me. Uh, I identify with them because when when they especially X Men a lot that's all comic book world right where there's like the the guy who you know is different and he's fighting against the rest of the world but in X Men they all united together and because of that unification they the their differences made them feel special and I felt like that's what um, you know that's what I had in my own family and that's you know our differences made us closer and we had this kind of united front against the world. It's interesting in, in your book you talk about sort of being a misfit and sort of identifying with nerds and nerd culture and I think that's very much who the X-Men are as well as, you, right. I mean, as you've said. Um, what, um, now that you know, you're at the forefront of that and it's, it's cool to like these sort of things, what's, what's been your kind of favorite revelation um, now that geeks rule the world and all that? Oh. Uh, what is my favorite revelation of geeks ruling the world? Well, what's what's like the the most fun thing for you now that it's it's mainstream and it's it's cool to like the X Men and it's cool to go to Comic Con and right. it's cool to. I think um, I th- that's a, it's a good it's a really good question. It's a cool feeling, and if it's a good feeling, it's a strong feeling, it's a confident feeling. Where there's people that want to judge people by the way they look. Um, and or by the, their interests or by their ethnicity or their religion, all of a sudden those people, like the bullies, uh, they're the people who look down on you. They're they're no longer the cool ones. And in fact, anybody who who looks down on somebody for who they are, their interests, uh, the rest like the rest of the world, they just know it's just not it's not cool. And they know it's not cool. Usually, like when people like I felt like growing up, like that's what you know. It, you kind of. You get ostracized, and, and people are always afraid to stand up to the bullies because you don't want to get picked on next. But the, I think the tides have changed, and it's um, and it's it's everybody is free to embrace their individuality. And I think that's the change. Like when now being a geek is cool. I just think that means that being an individual is cool. And X Men, I think, will be great, and I love it, and I'm super excited. But I know it's going to be a fantastic movie, and I know how hard everybody works to make it an amazing movie for the fans and make it really exciting and fun. We are all very excited to see X Men, and thank you well, so thanks. much for joining us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks for having me, guys. Hey, high five. All right.